Hey guys, welcome to another puppy vlog. I've been telling you a new dog is coming into my life Rachel, and this is uh, Rachel. Uh, what? What? Rachel, where's Wallace? Why what? do you have Wallace? I was just Why introducing are you with my dog. Can I give me my puppy? I was just this introducing is my puppy. Okay, okay, okay guys. The truth is this is my mom and this is my mom's new puppy. So meet this my is Wallace. Meet my new sibling. So I told you guys a new puppy was coming into my life and while he's not my puppy he is my my puppy he's my mom's puppy but he is my sibling so he is in my life and now that i live close to my mom as you guys saw on my latest video you're gonna see this guy grow up and we're gonna show you what we do to help raise him and you're no longer the baby i know i'm no longer the baby this is the baby here's the baby all right all right all right you guys caught me this little nugget is not necessarily my dog per se but he is my new sibling because my mom just adopted this little chicken nugget, huh? Uh, you can see my two boys over here. We are working on Finn being really gentle with the new puppy. So I'm gonna talk to you guys in a video very soon about puppy proofing and some of the really, really unique things we're doing to make life with raising this puppy much easier. But in this video, I'm gonna talk about Wally and why bringing him into our life it right now has been such a challenging time. If you guys didn't see my most recent video, we have moved from Texas to Oregon and it's summer 2020 right now and we are in the middle surrounded by wildfires. In this very moment, we're safe, we're level one. Level three is evacuation, so right now we're just on alert. As you can see, it's very smoky. So I wanna talk a little bit about what it's like bringing this little chunky monkey home uh, during a wildfire. I'm gonna show you guys his go bag, which will be really helpful. I think anybody, whether you have a natural disaster near you or not, you have a go bag ready for uh, your new puppy or your new dog or your existing dog or puppy. This guy's gonna grow up with me around. My mom's gonna be his main caretaker, of course, but we are going to show you his entire life growing up. You guys are going to help, no bite. You guys are going to help Wally grow up and to be the cutest little chunky monkey for my mama who is fairly recently a widow. This is gonna be her new little best buddy. Okay, as you guys know, I am obviously a big advocate of rescue and adoption and working with homeless animals. I mean, I actually learned that from this human right here, my mom. Uh, we had rescue cats and dogs growing up my entire life and she's been massively supportive of our mission here. But I wanted you to hear from her directly, you know, why she ended up going with a responsible and reputable breeder instead of a rescue group. Well, I made the decision to bring a dog in, back into my life, and especially when my work moved that cut my commute from an hour and a quarter every day each way, so two and a half hours to just a little over six miles away from the house, so I decided to go ahead and go with it. Well, unfortunately, I made that decision right before coronavirus hit. And what happened is uh, there were no dogs. Uh, shelters were emptied out. Um, I had certain physical limitations, which limits what type of dogs. I have to be careful not to get uh, overly, you know, a physically strong dog. And I tried for months. I made applications. I had interviews. Uh, one, one rescue group told me my yard was too pretty, that they were sure that I would be upset if my yard got messed up. So um, I told Rachel, I have this hole I need to fill, and I can't fill it this way, and uh, the way that I would you know, have done all my life. So we, we went, I went searching, picking out breeds, sizes, and qualities of the dogs, and found a responsible breeder in Oregon that was uh, had a puppy. I have a lot of people on here that have Labradoodles, Golden Doodles, all kinds of purebreds that come from breeders. And I've always told you that I don't judge you for mm -hmm. the way that you get your dog. Mm -hmm. um, I, I always promote uh, rescue and foster work, mm -hmm. which she helps, still helps in that mission. Mm -hmm. I always promote going to a reputable breeder, which I have more information on that link down below. <clears throat> but at the end of the day, I just want you guys to give your dogs the best life, mm -hmm. regardless of where the dog came from. There's no judgment, it's only love here. Mm -hmm. And you know, there was a point where you and I were like, ooh, a little button head to head. But when she told me like, I cannot find a dog that needs a home, I've reached out 
all the way from Washington, mm -hmm. through Oregon, all the way down to California, there was nothing. Uh, I started reaching out to my network and literally found nothing that was a rescue dog that would be able to fit my mom's needs because you know, my mom is a fairly recent widow. And so that was something that we had to consider in her work-life balance and something that would fit with her life. And, you know, I, I don't think that we could have gotten mm -hmm. her a more, a more perfect puppy. He's just, he's such a mama's boy already. Look at that. Who I have to add, I'm very proud to announce, last night he slept from 10 o'clock at night till 6.15 in the morning. <laughs> this is reminiscent of when Rachel was a little baby and wondered if I'd ever get to sleep again. <laughs> so um, I'm very proud and I'm comfortable with my decision and don't feel like I have to uh, justify it. Um, it's, you know, everyone does what they do and they find the dog that's meant for them. And I think uh, Wally here was meant for me. Yeah, I do too. Um, couldn't love this kid more. So Wally, let's talk a little bit about him. He is a Labradoodle and I don't even know if he's like a F1. I don't know what he is, probably should look that up. But he is a Labradoodle. He's half Labrador, half uh, Poodle. So he's got some Poodle in there just like his Uncle Finn and he is a reddish color, but he may change color. So I'm really excited to see him grow up and either get lighter or darker. You just don't know. Um, right now he's about nine weeks old. My mom brought him home at about eight weeks old and I went with her to pick him up and help drive him down to her house because she does live a little bit from me now in Oregon, but not too far. Hi. Uh, he has a cute little chocolate nose. Look at that. They call it like a liver colored nose. Look at ya. Look at ya. And his paws are also the matching chocolate. And he has these like green hazel eyes. Are you going to let me see them? Are you going to let me see them? Can you guys see? Oh, it's hard to see. He should hopefully only be about between 30, maybe 40 pounds max. With the fact that he shouldn't, <laughs> you never know, I guess, but he shouldn't get over 40 pounds max means he's always going to be a size that's going to be very manageable. My mom trying to run after Ben or Finn, both 60 pounds plus, uh, could be tough, right? Like, I mean, she's not old and she's not frail and weak. My mom is a tough, strong woman. She's a nursing instructor, so she's she's not weak by any means. But, you know, as we get older and as she gets older, you know, this dog could be lived to 18, 19 years old because he's going to be, or he is raw fed. And, she, you know, she needs something that if she's alone and something happens, this was her, her rationale to me, if she's alone and something happens and she needs to pick the dog up, let's say he gets sick or injured, she needs to be able to do that. And picking up 60 pounds versus 30 pounds is a really big difference. This dog, guys, I'm telling you, is phenomenal. His temperament is fantastic. You've seen all the rescue puppies that I have fostered, rescue adult dogs I have fostered, and they're all wonderful in their own amazing way. This puppy is just the calmest demeanor I've ever seen in a puppy. Now, he's not calm, I'm not saying he's calm, he's got the energy, he's got the land shark tendencies, but he has the calmest demeanor of a puppy I have ever seen. And I think some of it too is we have Ben and Finn here playing with him because they're all up to date on their core vaccines and titered and, and good to go so he can be around them. We're not going to any dog parks or anything, but he is just such an in-tune dog. He adores my mom already, which is all I could ever ask for. It's been really tough for my mom to adjust to living to life alone, which is another big reason we wanted to move closer because I want to be here for her. I'm super close to my mom and I'm so excited for you guys to get to know her. And I'm going to be documenting his life growing up and we're going to be having some really cool projects along the way. So make sure you click subscribe and turn those notifications on. We're very, very close to hitting 100,000 subscribers if we haven't yet. And so I'm so thankful to have all you guys around. One tip I want to give you guys in case you are in an environment where you know, there's hurricanes or tropical storms or earthquakes, you're going to shake it, uh, or even if you're near wildfires, wherever you are, I highly recommend you have a go bag ready. It's something we didn't expect to have to prepare with the puppy. So the things that we made sure we had ready for him, ready to go is kind of the go bag, which I think is really important for everybody to have, even if you're not facing a natural disaster because you never know when something's gonna happen. Uh, so his crate is ready to go and it folds up really quickly. It's the Diggs crate. I am amazed by this crate and I have a link down below all about that crate. We also had food ready to go for him, bottled water with bowls, some of his toys, some blankets and towels to clean up messes if need be. We have some water only wipes to wipe him down if because there's a lot of ashes outside. We also made sure that when we're at the vet that his microchip was working and he has a name tag and all his vaccine paperwork. The other thing that we got 
for him that's not really part of the go bag, but to really help with these wildfires are HEPA air filters. Because, hey, look at them. Because with his nose developing senses and dogs with such sensitive noses, we wanted to make sure that their air quality was as good as possible. With all of the smoke, you guys can kind of see it, maybe not. Like this is middle of the day and it's supposed to be 92 and completely sunny, but instead it's super smoky. What did you just do? What did you just do, little chunkamanka? That's not for you. No bite. Okay, so these are outdoor. So we're gonna take him over here and we're just gonna give him something he can bite on. Like that, like that, there you go. Yes, good boy. Oh, not the camera, not the camera, here you go. We're gonna engage in a little play because he's feeling very spunky right now, yeah. So guys, make sure you turn on your notifications and subscribe because if you love puppies, which if you don't, I don't know why you're here, uh, you're gonna want to see everything we do with this little chunk of monster. Fun videos to training videos to tips and advice. We're gonna go all about what he's eating and how we're feeding him and crate training him and all the fun stuff, yeah. Yeah, and we're gonna show you how we introduced him to my dogs, my mom's cats, but you can see one of them right there. <laughs> so if you want to see uh, some current crate training videos, you can click the video right here. And if you want to see what my favorite treats and chew toys for puppies are, click the video right here. And I hope you have a beautiful day.